talking about the alpha ketoglutarate family, also called the glutamate family because all of the amino acids that are made in this family include glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate as precursors. Now this is a very good place to start our discussion because the alpha ketoglutarate family starts with a process that's very central to many amino acid me metabolic uh, processes. And this, this pathway is known as transamination. So transamination occurs when an alpha keto acid is converted into an amino acid. And that requires a donor of amine group, which is in this case described as amino acid X. And that amino acid X, after donating its amine group, becomes an alpha keto acid. So we sort of see these swapping. Well, that's a lot of words. Let's take a look at what actually happens in the process. So we see here alpha ketoglutarate, our precursor of all the amino acids in this family that I described. We see to its right that the amino acid aspartate. Aspartate is the donor of the amine group that will help to make glutamate. We see in this process that starting at the top on the left, alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate on the bottom left. And the process, aspartate or aspartic acid, becomes oxaloacetate on the lower right. So this is now showing us structurally what's happening with the words that I showed in the previous slide. The alpha keto acid number one is alpha ketoglutarate. The amino acid number two is glutamate. The amino acid number one, our starting amino acid or amino acid X is aspartate. And our final alpha keto uh, acid X is uh, oxaloacetate. We can actually see very simply what's happening right here. We see the oxygen on alpha ketoglutarate, and we see the amine on aspartate. They're basically swapping. And here's the swap that they do. The oxygen goes from alpha ketoglutarate to oxaloacetate, and goes from aspartate to make glutamate. This is central to transamination, and every transamination that I describe will have exactly this going on. The molecules in other transaminations will differ in terms of what the starting materials are, but all that's happening is the swapping that I describe here. So, that, uh, having understood now what the process of transamination is, we can just begin to understand metabolism that's happening among many amino acids. The next amino acid I want to describe its synthesis of is glutamine. And glutamine turns out to be central to amino acid metabolism for a very different reason. And it actually relates to the other, another lecture I will give uh, in this series relating to the urea cycle. And we'll see what happens here. Now, glutamine is really important for what I describe as nitrogen metabolism. And when we talk about nitrogen metabolism, we're really talking about something that all amino acids have to have, the amine, of course, containing a nitrogen. Well, not all nitrogens get onto amino acids as a result of transamination. It's a very common way, but not the only way. In making glutamine, glutamine is made in a very simple reaction from glutamate, as we see here. And we've already seen how glutamate is made. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is known as glutamine synthetase. And you can see it requires ATP. But we see that the nitrogen source here is ammonia, or in this case, ammonium ion, which is the same uh, in an aqueous solution. This ammonium ion is produced as a byproduct of breakdown of other amino acids. And that's pretty straightforward, except when we consider that ammonium ion or ammonia is toxic. So people talk about detoxing and all that sort of thing when they talk about their, their bodies and their health and so forth. And they, in a lot of the cases, don't understand what that actually means. But we talk about detoxifying something. This is a reaction that actually detoxifies ammonia because it's grabbing free ammonia, which is toxic, and putting it onto amino acid to make glutamine. Now, this enzyme that, does, that catalyzes this reaction is a very complicated enzyme. We're not going to go into all the details of it. But suffice it to say that this reaction is important to control. Cells don't want to make too much of anything, and so this reaction is important for grabbing ammonium. But if a cell makes too much glutamine, it'll have other problems. So therefore, it's important to control how much glutamine is being made. This enzyme is regulated by a wide variety of things, and some of them are shown on the screen here. These are things that inhibit this enzyme. The molecules that I have drawn the boxes around are all molecules that are made from glutamine. We see histidine and tryptophan among the amino acids. We see AMP and CTP among the nucleotides. And we see carbamyl phosphate and glucosamine 6-phosphate among other molecules. All of these are made from glutamine. So why is it important that these things inhibit the glutamine synthetase? The reason it's important is because as they start to accumulate, it means that the cell has abundant glutamine. If they get too high, glutamine's too high. 
If they get too high, they turn off this enzyme. So there's a balance that is actually happening in controlling the synthesis of glutamine. Now, the alpha ketoglutarate family um, is uh, important because, as I said, we have to control how many different things are made, particularly of glutamine. So glutamine is very central to the metabolism of all the amino acids that's happening. Glutamine synthetase has multiple sites, and that's actually how it controls the synthesis of glutamine. Those multiple sites are not for making glutamine, but rather for binding inhibitors. So you saw on the last slide about 10 different inhibitors that can affect the enzyme. And there are multiple sites on glutamine synthetase, one for each of the various inhibitors. So as we look at the amount of inhibition that the enzyme exhibits, it's actually a function of how many of those sites are bound to inhibitors. The more inhibitors are present, the more sites will be bound, and the more the enzyme will be inhibited. It's important that the enzyme not have a simple on-off uh, 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 control, as we have seen other enzymes, but rather that we have an up down regulation, where we make it more active or less active, depending upon how much these other molecules are needed. Now, glutamine synthetase is important, as I said, for removing ammonia. And this is important in many places in the body, but particularly in the brain. As we'll see in some of the other lectures in this series, the accumulation of ammonia in the brain has very important problems neurologically. Ammonia is produced by reducing nitrites, which can be found in the diet, by amino acid metabolism, and also by photorespiration, which occurs in plants. In the liver, glutamine oxidation by glutamate dehydrogenase actually releases ammonia for release, for, I'm sorry, for synthesis of urea. And urea is the excretion product by which we get rid of excess amines that appear in our body. In addition to the allosteric regulation of glutamine synthetase that I've just described, Glutamine synthetase can also be regulated by covalent modification. We can see that occurring on this slide right here. Looking at the enzyme in the unadenylated form, which is the uh, form before the modification occurs, we see that it is the most active or the more active form of the enzyme. The addition of an adenyl group comes from ATP in the reaction that you can see here, catalyzed by adenylyl transferase. This uh, reaction is facilitated by an additional protein known as P sub A. The adenylated form of glutamine synthetase, that is the covalently modified form, is less active. So we see this addition of this adenylyl group actually helps the enzyme, helps to control the enzyme in a different way besides allosterically. The adenylyl transferase can, in fact, um, remove the adenyl group, as I've described here, using a different uh, protein called P uh, sub D. And this reaction is a phosphorolysis, which actually uses a phosphate to remove the adenyl group from adenylyl glutamine synthetase.